What's up everyone? Today we have a somewhat serious article here on warminator.com. You can follow the blog post in the description below, but it's about keeping perspective. And this is going to apply to anyone, you know, you don't even need to be involved in fitness, but keeping perspective is going to help you be a productive, disciplined citizen, just a good person. You know, it really resets your mindset. When you're feeling really down and out, you know, you got to keep in perspective where you're at all the privileges you have, and that's what this article is about. So I first published this on June 6th, which is the anniversary of D-Day, where you had literally thousands of young men sacrificing their lives for their countries. And the idea here with posting it on that day is just, you know, remember them. And the first point I talk about in the article is, quote, I get to do this. So those young men, uh, I mean, really, throughout the 19th century, I'm sorry, the 20th century, and even before that, all these conflicts throughout history, you know, you know, World War One, you have World War Two, obviously, the Civil War in America, you have all these different wars going on, you have people born into slavery, they never have an opportunity, you have indentured servitude. So all these people born into terrible situations, you know, you even have in modern day, you know, you have people who are paralyzed. I don't feel like doing leg day. Well, it's great to have freaking legs. So I get to do this, having that perspective. I get to wake up every single day, live off of the shoulders of giants. That's kind of the, the theme here. The people who built up our species, built up humanity, our civilization to where we get to do what we want to do, whereas those throughout history did not. So keeping that perspective, understanding that everything you do in life is an opportunity is going to help you you know, stay internally motivated and just drive you to do the things that you don't feel like doing. And then the next part here is we all have privilege. So one of the big topics is obviously, oh, you know, he has white privilege, so he gets all these opportunities or he was born rich. If I was born that rich, I'd be this successful too. Well, you know what? No one cares. So I'm born in America. That's an absolutely massive privilege that not many people get. Just I, I'm talking in terms of throughout human history. I get these rights, you know, these rights to live my life, to do whatever I want to do. That's pretty unique throughout human history and even throughout humanity right now. You know, imagine being born in North Korea. You don't have internet, you barely have food. So just certain things like that, identify what you do have instead of focusing on what you don't. That's a big theme in Christianity and a lot of other religions where you have the that in Christianity, at least, you have the seven deadly sins. So, you know, in, in the article, I talk about them a little bit more, but pretty much you're focusing on what others have and you don't. So that's kind of the root of evil within Christianity and how you can fall and have your, you know, your, your whole livelihood destroyed, focusing on what you don't have and having greed and lust and gluttony and, you know, overindulging in your, your own personal pleasures. You know, identify what you do have and keep in perspective what others don't and the advantages that you do have where you're at. And that alone is going to help you realize, hey, you know, I might not be the, I might not be Elon Musk. I might not have a billion dollars, but at least I'm I'm not living where I barely know where my next meal is coming from. You know, I have a, a decent living. I can do what I want. You know, not everyone's in that situation, but a lot are, at least in the Western world. So identify that, and that's going to help change your mindset into a productive one. The next section is about controlling your emotions. And I use the example of the George Floyd situation where, you know, the media is saying, oh, um, unarmed black man killed by cops, and, and they're trying to prey on your emotions. Whereas the other side is saying, oh, you know, this drug addict um, just whatever it is, and they're, they're playing the opposite card. And in both cases, they're just trying to prey on your emotions to get a reaction. And if you can just disconnect and say, okay, I see that this is a pretty tragic situation. I'm not going to get emotionally involved. I'm not going to get wrapped up in the politics and the clickbait. I'm going to think about this rationally. You're going to live a better life. And, you know, that's, that's just one of the more recent examples. But this has been going on for years. And th this can also apply to, you know, if you're in business, you need to step back if you have conflict at work and just say, okay, you know, this situation, I don't need to get emotional about it. I'll just say that this is what I believe is the best course of action and let it be. You know, you don't, you don't need to get 
all wrapped up in every single little thing. Once you can learn to detach and take a step back, you can really see more clearly about what's going on and just make more rational decisions. It's not easy. Um, the first step I would say is to be aware and just try to get in the back of your mind, say, okay, I see myself getting emotional. How can I correct that? And once you can start doing that and that's, you know, you start seeing yourself doing that consistently, then you can practice actually taking that step back and disconnecting and learning to not get riled up when that's the goal of a lot of these outlets. Lastly, I talk about being confident and the example I use, for example, being confident in the gym, I might be very confident and just comfortable in that setting, but if I go up to a weight that I've never lifted, it's a little bit intimidating. But if you go in with confidence and you trust in your ability and your hard work, you're going to achieve a lot more than if you go up in a timid fashion. So, you know, the, the first time I deadlifted 600 pounds, there was no way I should have hit that. It, it was, I would do about 585 and that was really everything I had. And then on Memorial Day, my friend and I really planned out this max deadlift day. We wanted to pay homage to these people who did die in service in America and just say, hey, they don't get to do this. We do kind of back to that first point. I get to do this. There was no way I was going to put that weight down. I was either going to injure myself or I was going to pull the weight. And I approached the bar with confidence knowing that, hey, this is going to happen. And with that mindset, I didn't have any doubt. I erased all of that. And that mindset is really what propelled me to, to, to fulfill that lift. And that's the same for, you know, the, the, these ultra marathon runners who are running 100 miles plus. They get that doubt in their mind and they say, you know, no, screw you, body. I don't care if you're tired. I don't care if you're sore. I'm not listening to that voice in the back of my head. I'm going to keep going. And being confident in the, in the sense that, hey, I can still do this. I don't care what the situation is. I'm confident in what I have done to get to this point. And you'll, you'll be amazed at what you can do. So all of these things, you know, be confident, controlling your emotions, uh, recognizing the privileges that you do have, and understanding that you get to do this. You have this life while others sacrifice theirs so that you could have it. Keeping everything in perspective is going to help you live a much better life. Uh, that's the main point of this video, and I encourage you to read the full article so you can get different examples I provide, but that's the gist of it. I hope that you can work to apply this in your life. I'm going to end the video here, and I'll see you guys next time.